What's going on, guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode. Coach Joe here with Heartletics.com. And this is going to be a really good one because we're going to be talking all about who's holding you back and how do you break out, break free from the chains and start living the life that you truly want. Really developing that mindset, that, you know, that heart driven tenacity of just taking life by the horns and doing things what you want. And this is going to be a really good one. This is going to be a powerful message for anybody out there that maybe they're also struggling, right? Maybe they want to improve on their health and fitness journey. Maybe they just want to be more ambitious, but they just don't know how. So uh, Coach Jimmy, Coach Mark, and myself, we're going to be talking all about that. But first, let's talk about some wins. Jimmy, you got a good one, brother? Yeah, I have a pretty good one. Um, so some of you may know, some of you may not know that I also do a a uh, wrestling podcast and some wrestling things, Dollar Club Wrestling, Cheap Club. Awesome. Uh, my son loves you absolutely. Like, literally <laughs> loves you. <laughs> like, like when I showed him your wrestling photo and that, that video that you sent me over, he's like a kid in the candy store, man. He's like, that's Jimmy? I'm like, that's Jimmy. <laughs> well, wait till you hear this. He's going to love this. <clears throat> so me and my, uh, my best friend, Kevin, you know, we've always been into wrestling. And when we were younger, we had, we did like, we made up a little like league, you know, where we did wrestling and stuff. And that's, probably like over 20 years ago. So I, I've been promising him for a few years that I would do a, ma a, a match with him, um, you know, with all the technology and things we have now, it would be a lot cooler. So we finally did it on Saturday. I was able to do it because, yeah. you know, where I'm at physically and everything, I was able to do a good match. Um so that was good. I would, it's a win that I was able to get through it. I got some bumps and bruises. I'm sore. I'm old. I'm 44. But, hey, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, it was awesome that I was able to do it. I, I love that, man. And I, also, if anybody's tuning in for the very first time, you know, Jimmy, where he started off at was 430 pounds. You know, today he's sitting at, you know, 300 pounds, which is down over 130 pounds. So when he means, like, I'm physically able to do it, like, he, he's, he's been through this journey and that was in what, less than a year. You lost all that weight, right, Jimmy? Yeah. Less than a year. Yep. I, I love hearing that, man. Quick question before we go to Mark on the wins. How do I get involved? I want to do just a bucket list. I want to, I want to do one wrestling match. All right. That's, <laughs> that's my 2023. I want Oakley to see me in the rain. Okay. How do, how do we do that, brother? Can you, can you set me up with something? Uh, let me work on that. Let me talk to Kevin. I'll, you guys. I, I'll, I'll do a little road trip, man. You already came up. Yeah. Got to work out in with me, man. Now you can go into the ropes, man. Destroy me. And then we'll go get some donuts afterwards. My treat. Right. And you guys, yeah. you're not that far from me. So I'll definitely, uh, I'd love to come dot by and see that. Yeah. Our, our match was when you say it was kind of like a uh, extreme rules match. It was outside and. Well, you'll see when it comes out. I can't spoil anything yet, but I can't wait. I'm gonna show Oakley when it comes out. And Mark, hey, hey listen, if, if you're meeting us up, brother, bring the basketball, man. You still owe me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget. I didn't forget. Uh -oh. I'm ruthless. I don't um, think I've played since that time you saw me. <laughs> well, why don't you share with everybody some wins, man? Yeah, I mean, I, my wins this week are about the lifestyle being sustainable. Um, you know. This so weekend, uh, Jen and I had our 23rd anniversary. Saturday morning, uh, bright and early, Cole had a track meet and he had a PR. So go, that's my son, Cole. Um, but, you know, um, Paige is on the team. She wasn't racing this particular race, but she came out to support. Three of us got there. We realized, you know, 9 a.m. We dropped Cole off. He's not running till 11. What do we do? We go hit the boardwalk across the street and just walk for a couple of hours and get those steps in because we're all in that mindset now. And then... That night, you know, Jen and I went to dinner, celebrate our anniversary. And, uh, you know, I, I knew we were going out that night. So I ate properly the way I've learned, you know, all day. And I enjoyed the heck out of that dinner. Um, you know, had a great dessert. And my way in the next morning was identical to the week before where I had a nice drop. So no impact. So, you know, you can't beat that as far as sustainability. You can't, man. You're learning how to eat the foods that you love, right? You're managing in a way where it best suits your lifestyle. And it's it's like what you said, sustainable. I love that. Um, big win for me, I would say, is, is finally, <laughs> after so many years of my wife telling me to do this, I finally uh, bit the bullet and decided to upgrade from a Dell, right, to a, a Mac. And it's been great. 
slight learning curve, right? But it's been great. I like it because texting on my computer, right? And keeping my phone on, do not disturb and away from me is a lifesaver. That way, if anybody needs me, right, they can call me and I can see it right there on the computer instead. But anyways, that's a more technical win. <laughs> that's, a, that's a business operation win. Fellas, today, what we're going to be really diving into is who's got your back? You know, at the end of the day, um, past clients, current clients, and future clients. Guys, this is going to be a good one for you guys, because at the end of the day, you're on your own health and fitness journey. And let's face the facts here. If let's say you're in a household here with some unhealthy habits, right? It, it, maybe, you know, the kids, they just want to eat chicken nugget and fries. That's how my son is, right? Happy meals like almost every day, right? Um, maybe the, 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 your spouse, significant other, they're not in alignment with the same journey and there's going to be some tension. There's going to be some conflict. And so we're going to be going over, Hey, what are some things that you guys can simply be doing to just really making sure that the people that's around you either, Hey, they're with you or they have the understanding of where you're trying to get to. Because at the end of the day, like our job here as men, right. Is to lead better by example. And, and I, here's the thing, right? Like my wife, love her to death. She does not work out at all. Right. And I'm not going to, I'm never going to be that type of person to focus and force her to do anything. Right. She says she has her own life. Right. Like it's her life. It's her chapter. It's her story. I, I'm in my own lane too. Right. It's just that our lives can, you know, we met, we have a kid. Right. Et cetera. But like I'm my own path. She's on our own path. And I think that's why we work very well because we understand that. And I think, right. I could be wrong about I want to hear from you guys, but I think that when people, you know, uh, they get married, right? They have kids. They create these bad habits together, right? And eventually somebody's like, ah, oh, this isn't really good. I should make a change. And they try to leave, but it's kind of like the, the crabs to a bucket analogy. Have you guys ever heard that before? Let me share that one more time for anybody that's brand new. So basically, if you have a bunch of crabs and you put them into a bucket, and there's, there's going to be that one crab that says, I'm getting out of here. I know we're going to Red Lobster, right? I don't want to be smoking butter. I'm trying to break free. They're going to try their best to get over, even though there's no lid at top of the bucket. But guess what? All the other crabs, they're going to see that one trying to get out, and they're going to pull them back down. A lot of guys have that problem with people in their life, people in their you know family, coworkers, all this stuff. I heard it actually today. You know, My buddy was at the gym. I'm like, how was your weekend, man? He's like, dude, I'm just stressed. He's like, I feel like I can't do anything like the weekends. I want to just relax. He's like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do I'm constantly being told to do this. And then he's like, when I'm here, I'm not even focused on working out. I'm focused on all this other stuff that I got to do, you know, at work afterwards. And it, I, my heart goes out to him and it feels bad. And so today's episode is going to be giving you guys some inspiration, give you guys some encouragement on how do we start breaking free of those chains and really start raising our standards. Um, I'll finish this one's off. I want to hear from you guys though firsthand because you guys both had one an amazing transformation right inside of our coaching program. But you guys always dealt with this firsthand as well, you know. Um, Jimmy, why don't you go first, brother? Sure. Well, <clears throat> I'll start out by saying that um, you know my wife uh, has always been supportive of me and anything I wanted to do. But um, as far as this is concerned. You know, when I was going into the call and thinking about doing Heartletics, my mindset, you know, was I, because of the horrible habits that I've created for my family, I was go. my mindset going in was I need to make a change. Um, you know, I need to start somewhere. I need to make a change. And hopefully this will trickle down to the rest of my family. Um but anyway, going into the call, I didn't really discuss it with my wife because I, you know, she's supportive and all that, but I don't think she un would understood at the time, like how much I needed this, um, how much we needed this. So I knew as far as the financial part, it would be, you know, it wouldn't go over well. So I made the decision. I signed up. And then I asked for forgiveness afterwards and I just explained to her, you know, she was upset that I did it without talking to her, but I just explained to her, listen, I really, I, I'm sorry I did that, but I really need you to understand how bad I need to do this. I don't like where I'm at. I've created all these bad habits for you, for the kids. And I really want that to change. And I feel like this is it. 
um, you know, I feel like this is going to change our lives. And it just so happened that it did change my life. I mean, I'm down 130 pounds, you know, but I'm still, you can't make people do things. Like these habits have been created. I was at a point where I was ready to change. I had enough. Um, but you can't force people to do things. My wife, I wasn't ready um, to get involved in something like this. She's not at that point yet. Um, so I did not force it upon her or preach, um, you know, this is how we need to do things. It's because I had done things like that in the past and it just doesn't go over well. It doesn't work. And it just causes conflict. And, you know, something you said, Coach Joe, like you and your wife, you're on your own paths, but, you know, you're together. And I kind of took that aspect, like, you know what, this is my path I'm taking now. And hopefully, you know, she will jump on and my kids, I can, will start seeing my habits and change, you know. And I'm hoping that is going to happen. And I feel like if I stay consistent and keep doing the way I'm going and living my life this way, that it will rub off. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, she didn't, she never, she always supported me. She makes sure like I have my time to go to the gym and do the things I need to do. She's very supportive of me doing this and living this way. Um, she just isn't ready to. Yeah. I love it. it. It sounds like though, moral of the story, you took action and ownership over your life. Honestly, mm -hmm. you said, I, I had to do this. And even though I'm going to ask you for forgiveness, because I didn't ask you for permission, I needed to do something for me, for our family. And that's taking commitment. And I know a lot of guys, right. That talk the talk, right. But you know, they don't walk the walk, right. Everybody said they got big balls, but when push comes to shove, right. They're the guys that says, like, Oh, I'll get back to you later. Right. You, you took ownership. And that's something that's very hard for most guys to do, man. That's why I have a lot of respect for you, Jimmy. Mark, your story is a little bit different, man. Sure. Yeah, but like, kind of like, you know, a little bit more about you guys. Yeah. It's a bit of a different twist on that. Um, I mean, it starts off similarly in the fact that I knew I needed to do something. I was not in a good place, you know, emotionally and physically. And, uh, you know, I knew I needed to do something. I found you online. I was following you, but, you know, not 100% there yet mentally that that it was for me, even though I liked everything you were saying. And what I did was a little different than what Jimmy did. I, after finally realizing that, yes, this does sound like it is for me, um, I went to my wife and said, hey, I've been kind of watching this guy for a little bit online. I really, he really sounds like someone who could help me um, with a lot of the things I'm feeling, you know, mentally and physically. And I want to, you know, explore it. And her response was, well, does he do couples? Um, so she was like ready looking for something too. And, uh, you know, obviously that set off a journey that changed both of our lives. But I will say that um, the response to the program, you know, even though we both have had great success, you know, she lost uh, 23 pounds in, in, that, in those uh, 12 weeks, you know, I lost uh, 37. So physically, you know, it was a great success. But um, you know, her taking to the program was more of an element of this works for me. I'm losing the weight. So I'm going to keep, you know, I'm, it's, it's giving me the results I want, but I'm going to keep going. You know, so I'm going to keep going. Whereas my response to the program was not only I'm getting the results I want, but I completely fell in love with the program. So there was a divergent path there. And it took a little bit of aligning because, um, you know, Jen probably would not have been as consistent or as, you know, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, as had as much stick to itiveness stick if it wasn't for me kind of really latching on. So I kind of took the role of, you know, the role model there. And, you know, that was for me, for Jen and for my kids too, because I kind of felt like, you know, my son was on the track team and he was almost like a role model to me. But as far as my wife and daughter, like, you know, everyone's very stagnant physically. And I really felt like we were all heading down a path of, of you know, a bad place physically. And I said, I need to do something to change that. And, uh, and I really think that, um, you know, if Jen had said like, no, I don't think this is, you know, for me or for you, at that point, I was so in need of a change that I would have had to do it anyway. 
because sometimes you just need to dig in and do something selfish for yourself because really, yes, it's for yourself, but it's for them too. They may not realize it yet, but they need, you know, you to be the best you possible to, to be able to help them. So thankfully I didn't have that level of conflict, but if I did, I would have went forward anyway. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Like man. Coach Chuck, can I say one more thing? I just pretty my uh your I, show. Steal, <laughs> steal it. I just wanted to add, I didn't I meant to tell you this off the podcast, but my son, one son yesterday asked me, he's like, Are you glad you did Heartletics? I said, Yeah, I'm glad. I said it was one of the best things I ever did in my choice that I made in my life. He said, and I said, well, are you glad I did it? He said, yeah, I'm glad. He said, you're just a different person. He said, you're a lot, you know, you're a lot more fun and, you know, do more things with me and stuff. So that was that made me feel feeling. what it's all about. That was probably the best feeling in the world, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Um, thank you for sharing that too. Yeah. I love hearing that. So let's do this. We got what, 10 minutes or so before the end of the episode. Um, if you guys are sticking with us right now. Jimmy gave really good advice. Mark gave really good advice. I'm not going to give good advice, right? I'm going to, I'm going to punch you in the face, right? For the next 10 minutes, because like at the end of the day, like that's what somebody needs, right? Somebody is going to need, okay, Hey, Jimmy did this. He took action, right? It benefited him. He lost 130 pounds. Hey, Mark did this. He had the, it all related to having that conversation, right? At some point, Jimmy, you did it after in the, the investment, right? Putting down the $500. Mark, you did it before. And Jen was on that call, but it was still a conversation. Okay. So now let's get to the reality. Most guys are mentally and emotionally weak out there. And I feel bad for them. So Les Brown said it best. Birds of a feather flock together. You hang around with losers in life. You're going to become a loser. You hang around with winners in life, you're going to become a winner. The majority of people out there are losers, right? The majority of the people that you can also look into your friends, your inner circles are losers. How do you level up? Well, sometimes it's either one, you join something. Maybe it's a community group. Maybe it's a coaching program. Maybe it's a mentorship program. Maybe it's a Facebook group. We're actually involved, not sitting on the sidelines, but you're actually involved because guess what? That's going to shift your identity. That's going to help you level up or two, you decide what you did, Jimmy. Just take action. Just do this. Enough's enough. You got to rip off the Band-Aid. And it's tough, right? Like, hear me out. So, guys, here's the reality. Most people that's over 30% body fat, or remember, the U.S. population, right, over 42% of the U.S. is considered obese, okay? That's like over 50% body fat. Most people that's over 30% body fat struggle with a slow metabolism, low levels of testosterone. And the reason why I'm saying low levels of testosterone, because, guys, hear me out. If you are, let's say, lacking in testosterone, so lacking energy, uh, low sex drive, low libido, think about it, right? What else you're going to be lower in? Willpower, confidence. So life being this video game, the analogy that I always use, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Most guys, they'll say, oh, yeah, like I, I want this, but you know they don't actually want to wake up and go to the gym. Or most guys say, oh, I want to lose weight, but I'll get started next week. Like, think about it. It's because we're lacking on that willpower. How do we break the chains? You got to commit, right? But it all starts with yourself. It all starts with how you see yourself. And I, I love using the analogy of like me and my wife, right? I'm selfish. She knows I'm selfish, plain and simple. But think about it. Because I'm selfish, like she doesn't have to worry, right? Like I'm doing what I have to do to benefit from my family. And regardless if my wife is in health and fitness or not, I'm providing. But sometimes that means me taking ownership and me taking action and leading by example. It, it, you're always going to have people in your life, right? That friends, family, that they might not follow through with the same habits. They might not see eye to eye. And that's okay. Because remember, this is their life. But you also have to remember that this is your life too. So many people, right? They they grow up, they have all these dreams, ambitions. And then what happens? You go to school, right? Then you graduate from high school, start looking for different colleges you go to. You go to college, you're 100K in student loan debt, right? You get out there, you're trying to find a job. Next thing you know, you get married, you get a mortgage and you get kids and your life's over. People stop playing the game. It's like, dude, right? Like life's just beginning when you have a family because now you can teach them all the crap that you messed up on and how to improve on that. But instead, 
right? We live generation to generation of the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because the man of the house doesn't take ownership and doesn't respect himself enough to step up and raise his own standards. So what happens? Your kids, they grow up in bad habits. Your wife, they grow up in bad habits. Well, hey, if you're already lacking willpower, don't you think they're going to be lacking willpower too? And that's year after year, decade after decade, right? Generation after generation. And it all starts with what you guys did was taking ownership, action. Like that's it. It sucks. But I will say this, right? Like at the end of the day, ripping off the bandaid is always going to hurt. Most guys though, they don't have anybody in their corner supporting them. So it makes it hurt a lot longer. And then guess what? Once again, another thing I always say, anybody can do anything when life is easy, but it's when life throws you these curveballs and that's the inevitable. Life's always going to throw you curveballs. Life's always going to throw you stress. That's where most guys, they go back to their old ways. They don't have the motivation. They don't have the willpower. Why? Because they don't have anybody in the corner supporting them and helping them. Correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, but like everybody, right, has dealt with some kind of stress. Um, you guys seen the post constantly, right? But like, have you guys ever reached out to the community groups and said, hey, I need some help, guys. Today, I just don't feel like showing up or I just not feeling motivated. Oh, and yeah. What, Absolutely. Like, so, so what happens after you guys make a post and say, let's say the Heartlegs community group? You get so much support that it revs you back up. It's like, uh, you know, I always call it my second family. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, my, my family comes first, but Harletics is like my second family. I mean, I have formed relationships in there that extend outside of the community group. You know, it's just an amazing supportive community that lifts you up when you need lifting up. That's exactly what it is, right? It's that support right? It's that community. It's that love. It's that family that you mentioned, Mark, and hundred percent true to it. Most guys though, right? They want something, but they don't want to put in the action. They don't want to put in the work, right? And somebody might say, and remember, if this is somebody that's in our coaching client right now, past, present, current, or future, right? This is always going to happen. There's going to be family members that don't see eye to eye. There's going to be family members that, Hey, they want to have their chocolate. They want to have their wine. They want to have their, you know, the pizza, and that's okay. Like at the end of the day, like you didn't marry them for their food habits. You married them for their love anyways, right? So it's just like, realize this, that, hey, that's them. This is you. No one's going to force a gun to your head saying you got to eat the nachos. But yet most guys are like, oh, I don't want to waste the kid's food that I'm eating. Well, guess what? You're going to waste, you know, $2 by throwing away the rest of the chicken nuggets and French fries from the Happy Meal, or you want to get type 2 diabetes eventually down the road. What's going to cost you more? It's just like these things that people don't think about. They don't really put themselves first. And like at the end of the day, what's the easiest way to do this? If let's say you have somebody in your family, right? Now I will say this. If you have a coworker, if you have a friend, right? Cut ties with them, right? If it's somebody that's not like a close, close person, cut ties with them. Like at the end of the day, like somebody's going to come into your life for a, a reason, a season or a lifetime. And it's up to everybody to figure out Who's on that path with them? Who's going to help them? You know, and for the people that has the family members, I bet you anything, right? It, it, if and most guys don't do this because most guys hate confrontation, they just hate it, they despise it, and I don't know why. But it's just like if you have a conversation, like let's say my wife Allison, right? Let's say she had horrible eating habits, and and she hated the fact that I was going to gym. She hated the fact that I was working too much, or whatever the case may be, or whatever. You know how easy it is to just have a conversation, but how many, how many times do people actually have conversations with their spouses? Put it to you like this. This is a great example, right? Most marriages fail because of finances, right? That's where most divorces happen usually is because of money related. But at the end of the day, if you got your bank on your phone, right? And you're looking at all the statements and you're like, oh man, I'm seeing Amazon, buying some shoes, buying some coats, you know, all this other crap that we probably don't need. but guess what? Like you don't want to have that conversation. Well, is it going to be a lot harder when you can't afford to pay the bills? And then guess what? Now it's a bigger argument or you man up, you take action you just say, Hey, listen, sweetheart, you got some horrible spending habits. Go buy, you know, you love buying crap on Amazon. Anyways, go buy a Dave Ramsey money makeover. And let's actually start like being more financially independent and doing the right things. Guys, that's called being mature. It's called being responsible. Most guys today, like I said, they're mentally and emotionally weak 
you know, because they don't know how to do that. They don't know how to step up to the plate. They say they do, but they actually don't know how to actually do that. Now, in terms of health and fitness related, Jimmy, you did the same thing, right, that I'm about to say right now. Have a conversation and just say, hey, listen, I'm looking out what's best for me and the entire family. That's it. Take it or leave it. And that's it. If somebody didn't marry you for how you looked and eating habits. They married you for your heart, right? They married you for that love. Regardless, if you have a sit down conversation, and just say, hey, listen, I love you. But at the end of the day, I love myself more. That's a fact, right? I, I always tell everybody, like, my goals are me first and foremost. Why? Because if I'm the best version of myself, you guys are going to be the best version of yourself. My wife, my kid's going to be the best version of myself. If I'm not being selfish and prioritizing myself, my mindset, my health, everything in between, well, how can I help people and bring them up as well? Like, that's how you make the world a better place. It all starts with you. You can't change the world, expect not to change within. And it all starts by stepping outside that commit, you know, that comfort zone and taking commitment. Fellas, any, any last minute things you guys want to kind of chip in and chime in? I mean, you know, with what you were saying, um, you know, regarding like those conversations, I mean, me personally, like if Jen and I are having a fight, a dispute, and you know, it happens in every marriage, you know, it can be the best marriage, people fight. Yeah. I take it upon myself because um, Jen will get quiet and uh, I take it upon myself to say, no, we're going to talk this out because otherwise nothing gets resolved. Yeah. And it's the same thing, you know, whether it's an argument over money, whether it's an argument over your fitness journey, whatever it is, communication has to happen for anything to get resolved and move forward. Yeah. And, and so you just said that before we go to you, Jimmy, because I know you want to say something. Communication is key, right? Let me ask you a question. Do guys ever have communication with themselves? No, right? Most people don't ever talk to themselves. Guys, this is obviously different, but it, it kind of relates because yeah. if you're uncomfortable with being yourself and you don't even have a relationship with yourself. How can you fully be comfortable with somebody else? Because now you're dependent on them. And I think that's the issue is everybody goes out there trying to find love and trying to find something to fix themselves without just understanding like, hey, no one can fix them. They have to fix themselves first and foremost. And once you actually do, right, and develop that, that selfish tenacity, right, of like, okay, hey, I'm doing this regardless of somebody else's approval or not. Like, I'm doing what's best for me. That's when I feel like you level up in life because you're, you're finally doing what your heart, your intuition wants you to do. Jimmy, what were you going to say, brother? Yeah, I just want to say what you were talking about, guys, um, not liking confrontation and wanting to have the uh, conversation. And that was me before before this. I didn't want to have that hard conversation. I wanted to keep the peace, you know, even in other aspects of my life, as far as at work, if they wanted me to work an extra shift or something and I didn't really want to, or I had something to do, I would be, uh, I, I'll just, I'll just do it. Yeah. You know, but that one decision I made for myself changed that for me. Yeah. I am more confident. I know what I want. And if I, it's no, it's no. Now I don't have second thoughts about it. What's best for me is what's best for me. And I have the, you know, when it's time to have a conversation with my wife, um, that's a hard conversation. I I have the conversation. I lead the conversation. I don't wait for these uh, problems to happen now. Yeah. Like I say, we need to talk. This is, you know, and that wasn't me before, but that one decision I made and I said, enough's enough. I have to do something. Um, I have to change. And that changed everything for me. Yeah. So what you just said was a prime example, Jimmy, of stepping outside your comfort zone. Mark, same thing with you, man. You're leading that conversation. Guess what? That's not fun. That ain't sexy, right? That like, like this is going to be hard, right? But at the end of the day, guess what? What's harder is like trying to be a mind reader. That's why we always tell our clients, right? Constant communication with their coaches, right? Rule number two to having success in our program. There's only three things you got to do. Be open-minded, constant communication, join inside the Facebook, or excuse me, the community groups. That's it. Like just don't sit on the sidelines, play in the game. You'll have tremendous success. But like, you're not a mind reader of your spouse, not a mind reader of your kids, not a mind reader of your coworkers. So many people think, right? Like, oh, I should have done this. Or I should have done this. Or maybe I'll just do this instead of actually having that conversation. Now, it, it, guess what? Having that conversation is hard. But guess what? 
anytime you're doing something hard in life, it makes it a lot easier eventually. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to predict the future here, but Jimmy, Mark, you had a hard conversation with your significant other. By the end of the conversation, were you guys still fighting or was they, things kind of resolved? No, they, they resolve at some point. That's why I initiate that conversation to get to that resolution. And yeah, um, yeah. I mean, same thing too. Like Jimmy was talking about work. I mean, it was through Heartletics that I really developed kind of the backbone to stand up to a bad work situation. Yeah, you did. Really <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, you saw it develop, you know, in real time, you know, as I was going through the program and then that led to me, you know, being where I am now as a, as a coach and it's, you know, the greatest thing that ever happened. So, yeah, you know, you, you have to kind of develop that communication skill, whether it's to lead a resolution or whether it's just stand up for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Fellas, this would be a really good one. And man, we should probably do a part two on this one because we're already running out of time, but let's wrap things up this, right? Let, let's say it like this. Um, Jimmy, I'll have you go first. Cause I want you to do some thinking and then I'll finish things up. So I can do the outro Mark do go after Jimmy. But let's all give some advice, right? For anybody that's, let's say, they're stuck in a situation. Maybe it's their spouse, coworkers, whatever. Um, it's maybe health and relate, health and fitness related, or maybe it's just toxic. Because Mark, you dealt with that obviously at work. What would you tell that individual to kind of just say, okay, listen, man, like, just hear me out on this one. I know it sucks right now, but hear me out. What I'm about to tell you right now, this is going to help you tremendously. Jimmy, what would you say, brother? I would say this. It's it's very hard making these decisions um, when it's something, you know, you feel self. I mean, you feel like you're being selfish or you feel like your family comes first. But you need to realize putting yourself first is in a way you're putting them first, too, because you cannot make your family happy. You cannot make anyone happy unless you're happy with yourself, because if you're unhappy with yourself, that comes off of you and on to them, you know, short tempered, you know, it's just not good. You just, anything to improve yourself is going to pay off in the long run. You know, it's called ROI, return on investment, invest in yourself and you're going to see the return. I promise you. Yeah. Mark, what would you tell somebody that's listening, man? They're like, I'm really glad the coaches talked about this one. I, I needed this one today. So um, there's a corollary to Jimmy's ROI and that's COI cost of inaction. Yeah. And uh, you don't have to be unhappy. Like there are things that you can do, whether it's, you know, you're unhappy with your physical self, whether you're unhappy with your mental self, there are things that you can do to change that situation, but you have to actually dig down and make a decision to do something about it, whether it's setting a discovery call with you know, someone here at Heartletics so that you can start working on bettering your mind and your body, whether it's you know having a conversation with your, your spouse about whatever it is that's not correct there that you need to address. You know, Inaction will not get you anywhere. Staying in your comfort zone will not get you anywhere. Um, so you have to actually make a decision to make that change, but it can happen. Absolutely. And I, I, I would just simply ask that, you know, listener that's tuning in right now, just ask yourself this. If you were going to die later today or tomorrow, are you happy? That's, that's it, right? That's what it boils down to. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to the bank. You're not going to the grave of your bank account, right? Like that's getting passed down to your kids. So it's just like, are you happy? Like, did you live a life where you just sat on the couch all day after work, complain about, you know, how you got no energy, right? But yet you have no willpower to actually do something about it. And that's your life. Or like, do you actually want to make a change? Because if you woke up today, you can make a change, right? It all revolves around one foot in front of the other. And then you just ask yourself this. This is the next question. I always ask myself this. If not now, then when? Plain and simple. If not now, then when? And then the last question that I always ask myself is, what would the person that I'm trying to become do in this situation? Would they wake up? Would they go out, you know, for a walk? Would they, you know, try to eat more protein? Or would they try to work out? It's like, yeah. So why don't we act like that guy now? Because once we start acting like that guy now and not really caring too much about anything else, we're going to start to become that person. 
Bills, I really think we're going to need to do a part, a part two to this one. Honestly, this is a cool story. This is good. So much to cover. Um, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, Mark, I appreciate you guys, you know, helping me out on today's podcast. Yeah. Listen, for yeah. anybody out there that's tuning in, right, and you guys need help, hear me out. This is just a few of the coaches. There's plenty of them and hundreds of other guys inside the Heartlegs community group. If you need help, reach out, right? We tell our clients this all the time. Closed mouth, don't get fed. It's the same thing. If you need help, reach out. No one's ever going to force a gun to your head and make you do something. But if you got that that deep down, right, that inner voice saying, man, I, I need to start living life. I need to start taking life by the horns. Reach out. Go to heartletics.com. We got a free fat loss guide uh, that you can simply download going over the seven essential fat loss habits, free fat loss coaching video. And then just like what Mark said, if you feel like, okay, hey, I want to surround myself with people that are going to push me and help me grow in life and, and, and people that's going to keep me on the right track and, you know, really help me with leveling up. Then yeah, apply for a discovery call, talk to one of us, and we'll just see if it's a good fit. Other than that, I really hope you guys got some value from today's episode. As always, this has been Coach Joe. I got Coach Jimmy and Coach Mark with me today. Uh, this has been heartletics.com, and I will talk to you guys in the next podcast episode. Peace out, Girl Scouts.